Hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of An Anthropologist Plays. I am the Crazy Cuban, and if you're new to the channel, this is a series where I, an anthropologist, play through different games, and we review some anthropological topics and other interesting facts. So yeah, this game, boy, this game has a lot to love and a lot to question. It plays very loose with what we know about prehistory. So I'm really excited to look at this one. And we can definitely talk about different aspects. I love this intro. I love how you can hear the different languages and how it like changes from like English to Italian to Arabic. And then like the Bronze Age, you can hear the like working of the metals and then the Stone Age, you can hear the chipping of the stone. And then we reach 10,000 BC, somewhere in Central Europe. So this is gonna be something that we tackle through the gameplay. We're gonna be looking at who this game is based on, what uh, tribe of peoples the Wenja are based on. We're gonna look at what location in Europe this might be based on. Wenja, Masse Hassar, Masse Jan. So yeah, this is a really cool game. I'm really excited about it. I love the intro with the cave paintings. So the Udam are Neanderthals. And the Zila are loosely based on, I guess, like the Aztecs or some sort of like sun worshippers. This is a great scene. It's like what you'd think a mammoth hunt would look like. So yeah, I'm interested in, in looking at a couple different things. I'm interested in seeing like, for example, when bows were first introduced in Europe, uh, these kind of spears that they're using at this point in time, they would have been using like atlatls, like spear throwers, and they would have been using like thinner spears, thinner darts, not necessarily this like big heavy spears. So I'm interested in looking that, at that kind of stuff. I'm also interested in looking at how the people look. So whether they look, you know, European, or, you know, African or Asiatic. Because at this point in time, we haven't yet seen some of the introductions of genetic changes. Like, blue eyes, for example, hasn't come in yet. That That's like 6,000, 7,000 years ago. So, that wouldn't necessarily have happened yet. I love how we're just like... 
to Hadama. I love how we're just like in the midst of these like mammoths. That's another thing I want to look at. I want to look at mammoths, you know, like mammoths went extinct way before this happens. Yeah, there were mammoths left in England in the north and then there were some in like Siberia, like northern Siberia but uh, if this is Central Europe Mammoth had gone extinct by by this point. The 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 time of the great hunts of the large animals was over. Oops! <laughs> I guess I got too close. Uh, don't don't walk up to a mammoth with a spear. They they will hurt you. So yeah, these guys got the right idea. They've, they're coming in with bows. Let's try something different. So that one didn't go in. Let's see if I can get him. Yeah, right in the head. So yeah, you start out only carrying two spears and then you can like upgrade your straps and stuff. Nice. Another one. There we go. There we go. Oh, I missed. I think that should do it. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I'm not good at playing video games at all. I just, uh, I enjoy them. And I enjoy, you know, looking at the the historical aspect the prehistoric aspect of it tigri nope so that's interesting the women and the men hunting together i have things to say about that Yeah, Takar, what? Where am I gonna go? So that's another thing, you know, in this game, there is Sabertooth Tiger. But the thing is, at this point in time, Sabertooth Tigers were extinct in mainland Europe. Yeah, saber-toothed tigers, they were in Europe in the Miocene and in the Pliocene. This guy's dying. Yeah, and that's another thing I want to look at. Like, this guy, he looks like he has really light eyes. Like, blue eyes, and he looks kind of like... European looking. I don't know that that's accurate. Quarry shells. I like that. That's a nice touch. Those quarry shells have been like important to humans for a really long time. They've they've been found in like a bunch of different archaeological sites. Okay, here we go. And this is when the gameplay starts. I love this aspect of this game. Like, I've played it once before, but I didn't really, like, pay a lot of attention in it. But uh, I love how you, like, 
can gather and craft. That's really cool. It like it shows it's like a survival it's well it's trying to be a survival game. It's it's not as much of a survival game as ancestors. Salcamaga. But it definitely has those aspects of like you know gathering and crafting. That's pretty cool. I love how you just like take the whole slate. You don't break off like a piece of slate. You literally like take off the whole boulder. Okay, and we got a bow and arrow now. That was really easy. That took like no time at all. Would have been more realistic if we like had a mini game or something where we like shaved down the wood and like shaped it and got the string. I mean, I don't know where we got the sinew for the string from because that we would have had to kill an animal for that to get the sinew. But that's okay. And we made arrows already. We didn't have to work the flint into into arrowheads. That would have been another cool mini game or another cool aspect of it, like trying to like create the the flint arrowheads. So now we gotta hunt some goats. We gotta hunt and skin goats. But yeah. There's a lot of stuff that I want to cover and I don't know if I'm going to get to all of it in this run, in this like uh, video, but uh, I'll definitely talk about it in the next video as well. I, I plan on having a pretty long uh, series on this and there's a lot to talk about. You know, on Ancestors, I'm, I still plan on continuing Ancestors, the Humankind Odyssey as well. Um, I feel like there's not as much to say there because... Hold on a minute. Right, right in the butt. I feel like there's not as much to say about ancestors because it happened so far, so long ago that there's very little information about like, for example, Sahelanthropus or, you know, Australopithecus. There's not as much information. I still plan on doing some more videos about it. Uh, once I get some more information that I find relevant, that's interesting. Like if we find any new like fossils or if there's any new data that comes up, I think that'd be interesting. No, I cannot climb. In this game you cannot climb that easily. So, so yeah. Pretty excited about this. Oh, well, that's half my health. So now I gotta track this goat. So I did hurt it, but it wasn't a clean shot. Hit it in the butt. See, and I don't know where it went. I uh, can't find it. Can't seem to find it. It's a nice little spot. Nice little cave. Yeah, I gotta find these uh, these goats. So yeah, like I said, uh, I still plan on continuing with Ancestors, the Humankind Odyssey, but I'm gonna take in a back burner on that one. And then I plan on starting this one I'm really excited about the kind of conversations we can have about Neanderthals and you know the conflict between Neanderthals and, and Homo sapiens coming in into Europe which you know there's a lot to talk about because 10,000 BC there were no Neanderthals left you know Neanderthals died out like 20,000, 24,000 like years ago so that's also something that I want to look at so yeah I, uh, I did a little bit of research on the game and I was uh, pretty interested in in how they went about it 
Um, so like the Wenja language, it was completely created like brand new for the game. But it's not it's not like completely fictional. It's actually based on the building blocks of Proto-Indo-European. So they use like the syntax and like the verb, noun, object, direct object, um, construction of Proto-Indo-European. And they use a lot of the like word sounds, like I think they're called phonemes, but uh, the individual like sounds for each word, like bird or... you know, uh, bear, things like that. So yeah, it was, uh, the language for the game was invented, oh, there it is. Language for the game was invented by uh, Drs. Brenna and Andrew Bird of the University of Kentucky. And Andrew Bird, uh, he created 24 hundred unique words that's 2,000 unique words and he had a 40,000 word long script by comparison the English language has an estimated 171,000 words 171,000 and they're always adding new ones of course you know that's the that's the whole point of culture there's always new words uh, created uh, but yeah, so it seems small, 2,400 words compared to a living language, but this was completely invented. This was completely created for the game, which is, I just find amazing. I think that's, that's, that's super cool. And yeah, he had a 40,000 word long script of like dialogue that he had to like string together with, you know, different like verb conjugations and word sequences i mean that's just wild to me that if you if you're interested into in linguistics i think that's like super cool but yeah the problem with that is that so using proto-indo-european that that brings another issue into the game because proto-indo-european as as we can tell came about or, or or is dated oh that was a good shot proto european is dated to 4500 bc to about 2500 bc so okay i gotta find shelter so yeah so like you know the the language that they're using they're trying to f they're trying to find the language that is that would be the closest that would be cool to use that we can you know that we know about that we can use for the game and i think it's amazing it's super awesome that would they do that but i also think that we need to be aware that protein european was not around in 10,000 bz There you go. He's not blowing on it at all. It just starts, the fire starts magically by itself. If you've ever tried to start a fire, like I've done it with uh, flint and steel. So like hard stone and, and steel, which is what they would have used like Useful. colonial times, you know, like ex, uh, frontiersmen. Even like the Romans would have used flint and steel, but he's using two two like flint rocks, and those rocks that he used were huge, <laughs> like those are really big. <laughs> and oh, here we go. Now we're making a, a club. 
Oh, that's an interesting, yeah, that's an interesting way to do it, yeah. I wonder why we don't have an axe, because an axe would be really, really appropriate, I mean, for 10,000 BC. Like a polished, so like that, that, that stone that you have there, you would have polished it and shaped it, and then you would have put a groove in it. That would have been a lot more lethal of a weapon. I also don't think it's a good idea to set your club on fire. Because that defeats the purpose. At that point, the stone falls out. Oh. Angry kitty. You know, like, at that point, you're just, like, destroying the club that you spent so much time in making. Like, that's the thing about this game, you know, like, they don't really take into consideration the amount of effort and time that it would have taken to create a, a good, formidable weapon. You wouldn't necessarily want to throw that away, especially by burning it. And also, the other thing is, to make a torch, you have to have some sort of, like, burnable material, like, like, you know, pitch, tar, and also, like, some sort of, like, grass or cloth or cotton or linen, you know, something on the top that you bind, like, bound together. Bye. And you don't really want the, the club Bye. itself. You don't really want the club itself to catch on fire. That's probably not a good idea. You want the tip of it on fire, but... I do think it's cool that they're using the, the hunter vision. That That's pretty cool. I mean, it seems like easy mode. It would have been nice if you had on the normal vision, if you could see, like, the footsteps on the ground. I don't think you can if you're not... If you're not looking at it, let me see. Oh, there's some wolfies. I like these guys. And I like that. Oh, sorry. What do you got? I like that fire scares animals away. That's, you know, pretty realistic. Like, one of the great adaptations that hominins had, you know, since Homo erectus was the use of fire to, like, ward off predators and stuff. Like, that's pretty cool. So, like, the actual, like, response of the animals is really cool. Uh, some of the choices about the torch itself are kind of questionable. Yeah, Proto-Indo-European has been tied to the Yamnaya culture. And they're a late Copper Age, early Bronze Age culture from Eastern Europe. Uh, they were horse, there was a horse culture that uh, migrated all over the place. You know, they went into... Uh, India, they went into Persia, they went into like Turkey, uh, they went into Western Europe, you know, and they like slowly integrated with and replaced the local European hunter gatherers. So I think it's a little too late. I think it's a it's an interesting choice to have that be the language, but it is not any closer to reality because the language is like years like way too far in time see and you can't see the the footprints you can't see the footprints when when you're not so they probably did that to like save on assets on having to like create assets both 
in the hunter vision and in the real world but uh my club burned off yeah there's also um talking about proto languages there's actually uh, an older family of languages that's called proto afroasia i can't say that proto afroasiatic so that one it uh experts tend to place it in the mesolithic period right around 15,000 to 10,000 BCE so that one would have worked uh, you know as a language family you know it's it's more related to it's related to like you know african languages and also like languages of the levant and things like that so I don't know if it would have been necessarily if it fits with it being Central Europe. But you can make the case that, you know, these guys migrated over and this is like one of the tribes that's coming to Auras to like Central Europe from like the like the Levant area. Oh, look at this cool little mouse. Oh, that's really cool. Look at this like, little mouse. They just have a mouse for no reason. That's cool. I love this, I love this cave. I'm, I'm loving this cave. I mean, you're having to like go spelunking in here, basically. I don't know, like... It's hard to tell, like, if a human back in those days would have, like... Like, how far do you go into a cave, you know? Like, do you just, like, stay near the the entrance? Or do you, like, explore further in, you know? And there's also the problem, like, when you burn, when you have a fire inside a cave, you know, it uh, depletes the oxygen and it, it uh, causes carbon monoxide and stuff like that. So, you know, there's, there's actually, like, uh, cases where... They think uh, the humans are in the cave died because of like, uh, you know, because they like basically ran out of air. Classic Far Cry game. I love that you can swim. That's a classic since Far Cry like three, I think, or maybe even earlier than that. Three is the earliest that I've played, like all the way through. There's, there's the, there's the kitty. So yeah, saber tooth tigers. They were in Europe in the Miocene and in the Pliocene. So that's a period from twenty three million years ago to about two point six million years ago. And there's a new study that came out that says that you know, homotherium, uh, which is a smaller type of saber-toothed tiger. Oh, we got a cutscene. But yeah, homotherium was around until 28,000 years ago. So that looks like a Neanderthal. I guess is what they're trying to say. Tigri! He doesn't use a lot of words, does he? Oh. Yep. I would have reacted earlier than that. Yeah, these, this saber tooth. They would have been extinct by now. They were around in in North America, if you look at like, if you look at Smilodon, you know, they would have been around, but not in Europe. They, they had, uh, they had gone extinct by then. Homotherian had smaller serrated teeth. It didn't have large teeth like Smilodon. We 
go. Land of Oros. Oros. <laughs> nice light effects. Good, good sunshine. Even though our eyes don't, aren't cameras, I mean, I don't know why it has like that sun, sunspot, sun glare. It's not a camera. Right? Shalom. Dakar Hassan. Saila. Tigri Chawasu. Tigri Bayamar. So, yeah, that's another thing, you know, like. Tigri Udam Duff. Udam Shaus. I'll talk about it in a minute. So she's collecting Udam ears. She's collecting the Neanderthal ears for some reason. So let me just like double double check something real quick. Yeah, okay, so that's see, okay, so that makes sense. So I guess talking about what people look like in 10,000 BC, you know, she looks very different than the first guy. Uh, you know, she has copper skin. The other guy looked Eastern European, I guess. I'm not trying to, I'm not getting into like races and things like that. But what I'm trying to say is that they should look more alike. If it's the same tribe, if Wenja is a tribe, they shouldn't look very different. So yeah, see, this is another thing. It make it out to seem like there is all out war between the the Neanderthals and the and the Wenja and the Homo sapiens, but that wouldn't it wouldn't have gone down like that in the in the past, you know. It would have been like small skirmishes and. Not all, not all tribes or clans of Niantha would have fought with all tribes of human, Homo sapiens. You know, I mean, she makes it seem like the Wenja are all Homo sapiens. There's not different tribes. Walter Laiba, Oh, okay. Green leaves. Got it. Yeah, she makes it sound like Wenja are all Homo sapiens, or, or at least they're the tribe of, of Homo sapiens in this area. And then the Udam, the Neanderthal looking guys, they're all. There's not different groups, there's not different tribes. They're all in it together and they're all like fighting each other. You know, it's like. That's not realistic. That's not how I would have. I, I know that's simplistic for the game's sake, but it would have been interesting to see a more complex look at the relations. Like, you know, maybe you can befriend some of them, you trade, marry some of them. That would have been, you know, that would have been definitely more realistic from what we know of like. You know, Homo sapien and Homo neanderthalensis uh, genetics. We definitely, you know, breeded. Like, we were produced with them, so. Oh, I did not know you could do that. <laughs> Sorry. I did not mean to destroy your uh, rock cairn, but. <laughs> 
I did not know you could do that. This is like a cool little chill spot. You're burning some incense. There's a fire. There must have been somebody like here pretty like not long ago. There must have been somebody around here. Oh, somebody sees me. Hold up. Yeah, the bow is like overpowered in this game because I mean, once you have the bow, you can you can just keep your distance and like attack from a long distance. Oh, there they are. Who are those guys? I cannot see a thing. Oh, they see me. It was interesting that she saw my quarry shells and she immediately thought Wenja. As if like the Neanderthals don't use art or shells or body modification. That's not realistic. I mean, we have found some evidence that Neanderthals used uh, body, uh, you know, body modification like uh, shells and things like that in Spain. Definitely, they 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 found some some evidence of that. So yeah, it was interesting that she she thought that oh you're Wenja because you have these quarry shells. Oh, this is cool. So they got some nets. They got some like fish traps. They got some like fishing nets there. That's awesome. I wonder if you can fish in the game. I don't remember if I don't remember if you can do that or not. But that'd be cool. There's some green leaves. Oh, somebody's dead over there. Oh crap. Hold up. I hear I hear a I hear a cat. I hear like a jaguar or something. Like a leopard. Uh, there that's the last one so I'm just gonna go back give her the green leaves heal her up but yeah so going back to like what people look like in 10,000 BCE you know I actually like looked it up and I have to reassess what I said before so Light skin. Oh, crap. Nope. Die. Where he at? Where is he at? Oh, I got a club. I got a club. Where is he at? He's over there. He moves. He moves a lot. There you go. He dead? No, he's not. Ow. Yeah, I'm not doing too hot in this game, <laughs> but <laughs> as long as I don't die, I guess. It's not a permadeath run or anything, but as long as I don't die, I guess I'm doing okay. So yeah, we're coming back. We're giving her some green leaf. Saila. Saila. Ooh, yeah, the language is really cool. Tanyi. Slawata. Tanyi. So I don't know how they like, I don't know how they like, you know, created that word. I mean, like, Dubu. Slawata and then Tanyi. Screams and screams, you know, it's like, oh.
So this is really cool. I mean, you know, we know that herbal medicines and like homeopathic like medicines have been used since forever ago. I mean, I know more about like North American Native Americans, but Native Americans had a bunch of like different like obviously you know about willow and like salicylic acid or aspirin basically and then there's also you know um there's the the black drink you should get you, sh you should google that if you're interested yeah it's interesting the the names that they pick Takar. let's see what I got going on Looks like I have to go to a fire, bonfire. So I imagine if it's like other Far Cry games, those are probably the, the towers that you have to liberate. Okay, cool. So I can heal. Okay, I gotta get the green leaf. Cool. Okay. Oh, yes. I have spear. Hmm. Yeah, that'd be fine, but I think right now I need extra health. I think I need like as much health as I can get right now. I don't really care about revealing plants and stuff. That kind of defeats the purpose of like searching for stuff. So I don't think I'm going to get a lot of Scylla upgrades. I think I'm going to do a lot of Takar upgrades. Yeah, man has spear. <laughs> Jump cut. So yeah, I'm recording this on Xbox and uh, I can only record so much at a time. I don't have like a, a good setup for this. This is really low budget. What's important here is that you take away the the information it's what's important you know and if you get to like see me play some games while i'm at it you know that's that's pretty cool too so yeah going back to uh what people looked like in 10,000 bc um you know there's been studies there was a study of uh they studied the genes of uh 7,000 year old human bones and they found that they didn't have the, the gene for light skin so the analysis of the man so he lived in modern Spain so he lived in Spain about 7,000 years ago and he he didn't have the light skin he had he didn't have the light skin gene he had dark skin before it was thought that hold up I got some dogs here a dingo ate your baby dolls like little jackals or something that's pretty cool I like their skin pattern that's really cool but yeah, it was before it was thought that uh, starting around 40,000 years ago, right after humans left Africa, they started having light skin. But this is actually not true. That 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 wouldn't that wouldn't have happened that way. It's actually a lot a lot closer to us. It was like closer to 7,000 BC, or sorry, 7,000 years ago. Oh, that's awesome. That was a cool deer. 
I, I just love the fauna. I love all of the animals in this game. I wonder if you're gonna see like Megalosaurus and like all the different like all the different animals that were around in Europe at this time. The megafauna. Although technically in ten thousand BC, you know, the megafauna was already dying out. It would have died out by then. Cause humans like if they had if they had set this at like twenty thousand or forty thousand BC, it would have been very different because then you have the the connection to the Neanderthals, and then you have mammoths, and then you have a lot of the like saber tooth tigers. So forty thousand BC or twenty eight thousand BC would have been really cool. I think they probably didn't want to get, you know, young Earth creationist mad by saying it was like too long ago or something i don't know maybe they just like the the thought of 10,000 bc as a number i don't know but yeah Ooh. oh look at this guy oh he looks cool oh don't go away come on don't run come back i love how he's got the four tusks that's so cool Oh, he's dead. But yeah, so Light Skin appeared 7,000 years ago. Blue Eyes appeared 6,000 to 10,000 years ago. So there's actually a really cool video by YouTuber Trey the Explainer. And he, he goes through the movie 10,000 BC, which is also riddled with issues and problems. But he goes through there and he, he says the same information that I found out, which is basically blue eyes appeared earlier than light skin. So you would have had this like very striking dark skin, light blue eyed humans, which would have been, you know, really striking to like the Neanderthals are like, you know, other humans that, that, that weren't, weren't used to that, that kind of stuff. But, you know, I mean, it's, it's in there. It's, it's not, is this a green, green leaf? I guess not. But, you know, it, it's in there. I mean, 7,000, 6,000 years ago. I mean, I give them the benefit of the doubt. Oh, cool. So I got my reward stash. That's awesome. So yeah, I'll, I'm just taking all of it. I'm taking all of it. But uh, yeah, you know, I mean, I give them the benefit of a doubt. I mean, it's it's for the video game. They're trying to make it interesting. But, you know, so you, you have like lighter skin humans. You have blue eyes. So that's all fine. What I take issue with is that they don't look similar to each other. They look different. Like Sila, I don't I'm I'm not racist. I'm not trying to be racist or anything, but like Sila to me looks like African descent or maybe like Asian descent. And the first guy, you know, Takar's like hunting buddy, he looked Eastern European. Maybe that's just me. Maybe 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 I just got a broken broken uh yeah, I definitely can't do anything with that. I don't know, maybe my my gauge, my radar is broken on that, but uh I don't know. Just comment below what you guys think. If you think they uh they got the like uh ethnicity of the characters right in the game or not. Oh, that cool green leaf. <laughs> oh, we got a wolfie. Nice. Yeah, the spear doesn't do a lot of damage when you poke. 
but if you throw the spear, it multiplies the damage that it does by a lot. I also love how you heal just by like eating meat. It's like me, strong man. I eat meat and it heals me. Like it would have been cool if you like put a poultice on or put like leaves on your body or like, you know, like, I don't know, like even the broken finger. Like, uh, you know, the other Far Cry's in Far Cry 3, it, you got like a broken finger and like you like snapped it back in place or like you you could snap you know like it'd be cool if you could snap your like leg back in place or something oh hold up can i get him from here yeah i can get him from here what yeah the spear is just brutal man oh we got out of me hold on bingo i don't i don't care about you yeah, the, the spear is brutal. It, like, multiplies the power of it. Like, when you throw it, it's just, it's just brutal. Okay, cool. So we're coming up to a cave here. I think this is the shaman. I think I'm about to start my uh, spirit journey, spirit walk. Yeah, humans and Neanderthals, humans and Neanderthals overlapped for about 2,600 to like 5,000 years. But they definitely went extinct. You know, they, they lasted the longest in Iberia, like, because the peninsula is, like, separated. It's, like, kind of, like, sheltered from the rest of Europe. They lasted there until, like, 37,000 years ago. But by 10,000 years ago, they were definitely gone. At least from what we can tell in the prehistoric record. Oh. See, this guy, he looks totally different than the other guy. I mean, if we're all supposed to be the same tribe, if we're supposed to be Wenja, you expect them to look... I expected everybody to look like this. Black, black skin, and light eyes. He, he's a good representation of a human, but he doesn't look like the other guy. If we're the same tribe, we're supposed to look alike, you know? I like how many shells they have. I wonder if there's like a connection to like the ocean, you know? If they like, cause that's another thing, you know, even in the in the Paleolithic, there were like there were huge trade networks that span like the the entirety of Europe. You could get like flint in one place and like traded with like shells, seashells from another place. Oh yeah, that's what happens when you drink blood. <laughs> that's definitely what happens when you drink blood. Oh, so I guess I'm tripping now. So yeah, this is my vision quest. I like the hut. That's an interesting hut. Good use of like wood and skins. Oh, look at my boy. Look at how big he is. Megaloceros. Yeah, wow. 
I hope we get to hunt one of those. That, that's awesome. Oh, okay. So we're flying now. We're flying now and the owl is our spirit guide. Okay. So yeah, at the beginning of the game, they called the Udam cannibals, like flesh eaters. And you know, that's, that's such a, I, I hate that because Neanderthals, there's no indication. I mean, so there's some evidence that in order to survive lean times, Neanderthals like ate, you know, some like members of the like like some of the some of the skeletons found have evidence of like butcher marks but you have to realize like neanderthals were already in decline and they were they were stressed from the from the weather like the changing weather meant lack of food meant colder, harsher winters. It meant smaller game that they weren't used to like hunting because Neanderthals, as far as we can tell, didn't have bow and arrow. They didn't have spear throwers. They had like spears, like big beefy spears. Um, nice. And they, uh, they hunted by going up to the animal and like stabbing it. That's why like a lot of Nianto skeletons have like the same, the same like uh, injuries that rodeo clowns have because they like, they're wrestling and like jumping on top of like giant, you know, bison size, rhinoceros sized animals. So I really, I, I really take issue with the with the entire Neanderthals cannibals. Uh, oh, there, there's some. Yeah, I take issue with Neanderthals as cannibals because they, they necessarily wouldn't have done that. I think they would have done that if 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 it was like lean times, you know, you had to survive. But if there was food around, you know. They they cared about their dead. They they buried their dead. They uh, they cared about each other. There's like the shows of like a Neanderthal elder, like an old man that had like healed injuries. So like you can tell that they cared for him while his injuries healed, and then he he died of like old age. Or like there's another one that I if I remember correctly, and you can you can. Uh, look it up but if I remember correctly there there's one that the Neanderthal had like a, like a club foot or something had like a, a physical the person had a, a physical issue and uh, they couldn't have like fended for themselves they couldn't have like hunted but they were still cared for and they were like you know helped and fed all the way until they died of like old age, like, you know, 40, 50 years old or whatever. So, you know, to me, that doesn't say, oh, yeah, we're going to eat you. Like, if you can't hold your weight, if you can't uh, hunt, uh, we're going to eat you. Uh, I don't know. That To me, that, that says... Oh, okay. Guarpati. Guarpati. I am Guarpati. Interesting that he's using blood to paint on the cave instead of using ochre. 
Ulauko wal waida wal kwaswang. Haiwa si bargwa shayu. Tushida hamagata. Tushida hamagata. Tum yauga. Winjara nartar lajarsh. Tilauka sakwam. Musanu jausman. I love his bow. I love the bow he's using. That's pretty cool. And I love I love these pots. Yeah, those are really cool. So pottery in Europe, the earliest one of the earliest uh examples is from 15,000 BCE. It's called the Bella Spila pottery. It's from Croatia. So by 10,000 BCE Oh, that's really cool. I love those shells. Look at that. It's got the pigment in there and it's got the little like mortar and pestle where he like ground the pigment out. That's pretty cool. But yeah, the the Vela Spila pottery, it's from 15,000 BCE. So by 10,000, you definitely have pottery. It's like basically the, the beginning of the... So it's the Mesolithic. And then like when, when, you, when you get to... When you have agriculture, then that's the Neolithic. But uh, technically, we're talking about the Mesolithic right now, which is like the Middle Stone Age, where you have like different uh, like tools and stuff. Oh, this is cool. So I can fly and like see through my owl's eyes. It's like Assassin's Creed a little bit. Yeah, okay, cool. So I can tag him. So it's just like it has in screen. Okay. So I'm going to... Is that a bear? Oh my god, that's a bear. That's totally a bear. I was going to fight these guys, but... Yeah, I think I'm just going to sit back and watch this. So yeah guys, it's been an hour, so I'm just gonna cut it there. But uh leave your comments. Let me know what you guys thought if you like this uh series. And I'll catch you on the next time.